Hi YouTube, it's Karen, uh, Karen Sort of Fairy Tale, coming to you with my um, week one Opti, two weeks away from surgery update. So um, I'll start with the numbers. So last week on October 31st, I was at my highest weight of 289.1 and this morning, I was at 280.8, which is a loss of 8.3 pounds. So um, I'm pretty happy about that. As um, my mom said, it almost makes you want to drink the OctiFast, which I quickly said, no, not really, but at least it's a good loss. So um, I know that my hard work is paying off, which is nice. So um, I can't say that I've been 100% uh, faithful to the OptiFast. I have had um, a couple little slip ups. Um, I did find out that I'm not supposed to be having the um, sugar free pudding. It's only jello. So that. Um, sucks. I don't like jello as I've mentioned so I am uh, I'm bummed about that because at least it was a different texture and flavor combination. I'm actually looking forward to post-surgery because I'll be able to have things like yogurt and cottage cheese and milk and um, a variety of tastes as opposed to the OptiFast which I'm stuck with right now. So I'm basically down to the OptiFast shakes and um, and broth. Um, I am still drinking my Diet Pop just because I, there's no way in hell that I'm giving that up right now on top of not being able to eat and feeling starving most of the time. Um, I've been a little bit of a raging bitch and so that's tough. Um, I'm pretty good most of the day and then around 4.30 I kind of start to lose my mind especially you know when my family's like having dinner and um, I feel like I'm starving to death and <laughs> I don't get to eat I get pretty frustrated. Um, as far as like choking the shakes down they definitely taste better to me than they did in the beginning. Um, but the hunger hasn't really stopped for me at this point. I'm still hungry. Um, I wouldn't really say that it's getting easier. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, it is what it is. I'm definitely not um, starving the way I felt the first few days. Um, but still hungry, for sure. Still hungry. So, I don't know what to tell you guys about that. But, um... Yesterday, I went to Toronto and I had my um, pre-admission appointment or my PATS appointment. Um, so basically, I went in. Um, it was I was there for about two hours, uh, which I guess is pretty good. It, it could be longer, so that that wasn't too too bad. Um, you go in and you register. They take your insurance information if you want to cover a semi-private or a private room as opposed to a ward room. So um, I do have extra coverage through my husband for that. So um, you give them that information and sign off on that. They just confirm all the information they have for you as far as, you know, your address and contact, emergency contact and all that. Um then the first person that I saw was a pharmacist and she goes over um, in detail any kind of medicine that you're taking basically and like that includes um, like Tylenol, Advil, um, aspirin, um, any kind of supplements that you're taking, um, vitamins, anything like that. So uh, that was pretty quick and painless for me because I, I'm on very minimal medications. I don't have um, any underlying health issues at this point in time, which is good, aside from um, depression, which I've struggled with since basically I was a teenager. So, um, so yeah, no real big issues there. 
Um, so that was fairly quick with her. And then you go back and you're in the waiting room. And then um, a registered nurse comes and gets you. And uh, again, she just sort of goes over um, medical history with you. It's definitely not as intensive as um, during your nurse practitioner's appointment. Um, but, you know, they, they want to know like, cause I used to smoke. So they wanted to know how long I've quit for what I was smoking at the time. Um, they make sure, you know, you're not, um, you don't have any basic health issues uh, that nothing has changed or whatever. So I was probably in with her, um, maybe 10 minutes if that, um, and so, yeah, she just goes over that kind of stuff with you um, and then kind of gives a general what you do um, morning of surgery kind of thing. So, um, you know, stop eating at midnight the day before surgery, stop drinking water five hours before surgery. Um, they did change my surgery time. So initially I was scheduled for um, an 11 o'clock surgery slot. Now I'm actually scheduled for eight o'clock, which means I have to be there at six in the morning, which is actually better for me because, um, you know, less waiting, whatever. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to get out earlier sort of thing. So yeah, that was all fine and good. Um, so after you see her, she takes you over to the lab where they take blood. Um, and then they do, um, I don't know what the technical term is, an ECG or something like that. Um, they put all these little electrode things all over your chest and arms and whatever. And then they monitor... Um, something like your the electricity in your heart or something like that so that was again very quick um everyone who was at toronto western was so so nice like they were unbelievably kind and gracious and just very 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 nice people so that made me feel really nice um so after that again back to the waiting room and then um, the last person I saw was the anesthesiologist who I literally saw for like a minute. Uh, he was basically like, you know, you're way too healthy for this, <laughs> like for this discussion. Um, you have no health problems. You're good to go. So, um, you know, they, they told me no nail polish, day of surgery, uh, the tongue ring uh, has to come out. Um, and that was basically it. So... I am good to go for surgery. I am uh, super excited. It's definitely getting more real at this point. I'm two weeks away and I just can't wait. It's, um, it's been so long coming that I'm just, I'm dying to get going already. Um, so yeah, but, uh, the loss is going really well so far and, um, I'm happy. Um, yeah, you can see I'm breaking out right now. I don't know if that's a result of the OptiFast or if it's because I got my period a few days ago, which was awesome as well with being on the OptiFast. Um, that definitely hasn't helped with the starving and the craving for food, for sure. Um, but again, that's even more reason for me to be thrilled about the eight pound loss because, um, I'm sure, as some of you girls know, you tend to retain water and get kind of bloaty uh, around this time of the month. So, hey, we'll take it. So, still plugging away with the OptiFast. I did get some sugar-free syrups. Um, I really like, I got a chai tea one, a vanilla chai tea one, and it is really, really good in the vanilla shakes. Um blended with ice it actually tastes just like um, McDonald's has a frappe a vanilla chai tea frappe and it's my favorite and um it tastes just like that so I, again I might just be fooling myself at this point because I've been on the opti for a week but it tastes just like it to me so um I also got an English toffee which is really really good in the chocolate I'm enjoying that a lot and then I got a peanut butter which sucks um little note out there people do not order the peanut butter uh da Vinci syrup it does not taste like peanut butter at all um I'm a huge peanut butter fan and it is not killing that craving for me so um I'm thinking you know as I get further out I've got some of the PB2 um 
the powdered peanut butter and I'm thinking I'll just have to add that to my shakes later on because obviously I'm not allowed to have that right after surgery and I'm not allowed to have it now but um yeah just don't don't buy the, the peanut butter sugar free syrup it doesn't taste like peanut butter and so Anyways, that's it for me for right now. Um, I hope you all are doing great. And um, I just want you all to know how much I appreciate your comments and your interest in my journey. I love following um, all of you guys. And um, to my new subscribers, thank you so much for subscribing. And uh, yeah, love you guys. Have a great week.